I'm stealing your truck, Mary. So I'm going right now. It's six o'clock at night. I'll check and see if your dogs ate any food. And um, um, maybe let them out again. It was hard to get them to go out this morning. They didn't even want to go out there. They're such wusses. And then like, I forced them to go out and I had to pick Lady up and get her to go outside. And then they realized it was 60 freaking degrees out, I think, and they, and they, um, well, the little one ran around at least. And then I'm gonna leave my car here and I'm taking your truck. And no, I'm not fixing the dent that Rachel put on it. I'm not pulling the dent out of the door. I'm not fixing that. You'll see. All right. Well, here's the S10, by the way. This is gonna be uh, one of my practice projects. Okay. Here's Rachel's handiwork. See, this is the point of contact. Okay. Those nice little aftermarket lights that she has on there. It's all taped up right now. I got you know, tape on there, clear tape. And then, you know, she thought she was running over a snowbank. So that goes the whole length of the bed. And then, mm, yep, that's dented too, right there. And then goes across there, and then put a white scratch on the door, and then a little bit right. And then, by the time she got up there, then she stopped and realized she was backing into our car. This car, actually. As you can see, it's the light paint. Oh. So yeah. So now I'll be, uh, and it's in light indentation that whole way across there. So if I'm gonna be painting the bottom of this door and blending it up anyway, might as well freaking paint that too. As small as this damn truck is, I don't see why the hell I shouldn't just paint the whole damn side. Nice little truck. She got, she paid like 1800 bucks for this truck with 102,000 miles on it just a freaking blessing from god that's a sweet deal sweet little truck that's what she wanted well she wanted a truck and she almost got a ranger i talked her into getting an s10 thank god but yeah sweet truck so yeah this is the truck i'll be stealing and doing the um, surprise repair on Let's go inside and let the dogs out. Hey puppy. Hey puppy. What are you doing? Your dogs have been acting really weird too. Like Hannah. It's just like doesn't know what the hell to do. Besides pee all over everything when I pet her. And... Yeah. What are you doing? She's just like shaking all over and convulsing and puking. No, I'm just kidding. I'm worried about your dogs, Mary. They're not eating. I fed them earlier today. It's, uh, what time is it? You got a clock somewhere? Six o'clock. And I fed them at, like, uh, one o'clock. How's your ass, Tasha? Yeah. 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 Here's Tasha. All right. So there, here's your proof that your house is still in, uh, hey, in one piece. Um, I hung out here a little bit trying to get them to calm down a little bit. They just like, I don't know, Hannah is just like all over me, just needing attention when I, when I sat down. So I hung out for a little bit. I mean, she's still sitting there sh quivering all over. Like, she's like, where's my mom? This is bullcrap. See? Like I said, bullcrap. So, yeah. So I hung out for a little bit and I ate some of your food. Mary, I don't know what happened. And I'm making this video as kind of an apology um, to, to getting in over my head. But... Um, that's your dash it's it's sticking way up out of the car um, 
and it's got these wires connected to it in the back over here. I don't know. And then your dash is just kind of all looking weird now. And I don't, um, I mean, I saw someone do this once and I thought I knew how to do it, but <sighs> I'm sorry. Now what makes this, um, this damn light, what makes this, uh, freaking install that whoever did this before so elementary is this piece of crap freaking five dollar stupid kit that doesn't even fit in here very good, it sticks way out, you know, sticks out way past everything else. Just a big gaudy. I don't even know if this is the right one for this truck. I wouldn't doubt that it isn't. Just retarded. But, uh, I mean, it's obviously like a Walmart kit. And that's all I'd be able to go pick up right now, anyway. I mean, for, I mean, you can get eight, ten dollar kits that just from different manufacturers that are way the hell nicer than that thing. This is just a typical teenager ran to Walmart grabbed a kit freaking crappy kit and that's what I have to say about kits crappy installation kit and for Mary um, a kit is this plastic thing that they have to mount in here to make the hole for the GM size hole smaller so that it'll fit a regular size CD player oh what's that a CD player yeah we got you a new CD player going in here. It's the one out of the Scottsdale. And Scottsdale's for sale right now. And I'm not going to leave the deck in there. I'm only going to get like 400 bucks for that truck anyway. So so we'll put it in here. That says a lot right there. I mean, look how this thing is mounted in the kit. I was wondering what those freaking Allen wrench things were. That's what holds the deck in the kit. They screwed holes through the side of the kit and put freaking those bolts in there. Oh, uh, junk. Yeah, we don't mess with nothing but nothing but Pioneer or better. There's actually like a few dust spots and a few scratches on that deck, but it's a nice deck. It's only a few years old. Good, basic, quality, stock looking, high quality deck. Plays WMAs, MP3s, auxiliary output on the front, detachable face. I mean, just the basics. That's what you need. So yeah, here's what I think of the audio audio file. Piece of crap. All right, here's a little lesson for people that just want to put in a freaking deck. I mean, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't just because you want to throw a deck in just to get by for now or whatever. Doesn't mean it has to be done all crappy. Take your deck, pull your trim ring off, put it in a safe spot somewhere. It's not going to get scratched or lost like everybody else's does. Pull, pull your pull your mounting sleeve off of the deck. Put the deck somewhere safe so you don't scratch it all to shit. And mount your freaking um, mount your mounting sleeve in your freaking kit. Get it in there nice and snug and tight and secure and bend all these little tabs up as tight as you can go. But just get it in there and get it in there right. And that's all there is to it. Then when you're done, you just slide your deck in. I don't understand why that's so hard for some people. Every deck that I pull out of a freaking vehicle to replace it with something is always like completely retarded. That's my two cents. Alright, there. Okay, that took me about three, four minutes. You slide it in, you find out which tab's up top. You see the tab right there that's bent in. Okay, there's usually three or so. There's a couple of them on here that when I bent them in, it actually sucked it up nice and tight. Make sure you make sure you're you're pressing down, pressing your kit down in there really tight and smashing those with a, with a um, screwdriver. See the bottom? Smash them in. It. Don't smash them in if you don't have to. Those are those other ones there from uh, my other installation in my truck. The sides didn't have any 
um, trim to smash them around so that stays like that. It's in there, it's freaking solid, it isn't coming out. And now I'm just going to mount it in my dash and when I'm ready I'll slide it in. Make sure you mount this in your dash before you wire in your deck. I've probably done that twice in my life where I've wired up the deck first <laughs> and then I couldn't slip this on over the deck into the dash. So, Alright. Alright, here's another tip. Make sure your freaking bolts on the sides that hold your mounting bracket, however that bracket's attached, are freaking tight as hell. Don't crack your plastic, obviously. But it's the washer that's got all the teeth on it, you know? That's not going to move. If you don't have one of those, put that on there. Either that or put some freaking Loctite on them or something. You don't want those things loosening up and having the freaking ghetto bouncing, you know, deck in your, in your dash. So... You know, and this is again, this is the crappiest deck installation kit you could probably get. Yours will probably have adjustments on it where you could adjust this thing closer or farther away so that you can bring the deck in or out. This one has no choice but to stick out of the dash freaking an inch and a half, so it's just going to have to be retarded until you get a different kit. So, all right, I'm going to install it. Okay, there's a shot of it mounted in. It's just a two screw mount on there and on there. Um, again, make sure those are pretty freaking tight, but don't break the plastic, obviously. Um, because these are what likes to loosen up. I've put Loctite on those before, too, which isn't a bad idea, since they're small enough to where, um, next time you go to take the deck out, it won't hurt it, you know? I mean, they're small enough screws to where the Loctite ain't gonna make it to where the screw won't come back out when you want to take it out. And I'm definitely gonna be taking this stupid kit out to put in a nicer one, but... I can make a nicer one of this. So, um, I could out of one by. You could take a one by, paint it black, cut the hole out, and mount it in here. It would look nicer, a lot nicer than this. Looks nicer than most kits that you can buy, anyway. I know a lot of guys that do it that way. Um, this deck, um, the guy had installed, I'm guessing, a noise filter on the battery. Um, on the battery line. I'm guessing that's what that is. So I cut it on this side of it and left it in there just for the hell of it. He also had this fuse on here which I don't think I have a fuse on my um, antenna or on the system control, system remote wire or whatever. So I just left it on there. Um, other than that these are all on the, this is an S10 so um, the GM ones are all labeled, which is cool, on this side of the harness, so thankfully that's not chopped off and lost somewhere. So I got all these, you know, it's really easy, you know, speaker, 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 you know. So, so let's get wiring. Now I am just going to freaking twist and tape these things too, because um, like I said, I don't know if I'm leaving the deck in here. Nothing wrong with that. If you like know how to tape good I guess I mean you can tape really crappy too I mean there's good tape jobs and crappy tape jobs so um, I like to do a, what they call a pig in a blanket on the on the really important ones you know the power the battery the constant the remote or whatever the all these and what I mean I can show you a pig in a blanket if you want I just gotta figure out how to set the damn camera up so I can do that it's a freaking iPhone, so here. All right, so this is the uh, old timers pig in a blanket. This is a little deal my dad taught me. He's a uh, he was a mechanic for ten plus years, and I don't know where he picked it up from. But these are your two wires. I'm just doing this as an example. Um, I don't like twisting the wires before you twist them together. I um, think they make a little bit better contact when they're not twisted together, and they twist together tighter without this. So even sometimes I'll even untwist them just to get them a little poofier, and then I'll kind of weave them together a little bit, like going like this, and then twist them together. But for the sake of time in the video, I'm just going to twist them together. Okay, so there's your twisted wires. You got your wire, you got your tape. You start down here or so. Okay, and you start wrapping it. I just put my finger inside the, the deal and wrap it at an angle. 
okay? Now I'm nearing the tip. You can still see a little bit of that copper sticking out. Now, after I clear the tip, I'm going to go about another, at least an inch past it. And I'm, and I'm pretending like I'm going around the wire the whole time and twisting that end up, okay? Now what you want to do is fold it back into itself, okay? And so your tape should be almost back where it started from, you see? And then do it again. Tape around it again. Okay, and before you get to the end, break it off. And, and then those tabs, I like to stretch them. Um, I like to really stretch that stuff before it pops because then it makes it a little thinner. And then when you rub it around there, the heat and the friction on that tape kind of bonds that tape to where it's really freaking hard to get it back off okay and then the old timers will tell you that um, doing the pig in a blanket you shouldn't be able to pull them pull the wires apart I mean it's pretty it's pretty hard but you can do it and it's not and it's harder when you when you uh, twist the wires better than what I did um, to do a really good pig in a blanket, you should have more than that sticking off. I mean, you should cut it back at least an inch. You should have at least an inch, and it should be not twisted. Okay, it's really important. This is how you do it the right way. Okay, and you shove it into each other. I like shoving them into each other like that, and then kind of massaging them together, getting them to all intertwine really good, and then twist them totally know what I mean when you do this. You really want it good and tight, freaking take your pliers and freaking put them on there. Like that. Smash the end of it. And freaking twist it even more. But, alright. Alright. Well, even if you've uh, installed what may seem like a hundred decks like me, I you still go about things in steps you know you don't just slap it together really fast obviously this is a fast install but um, another quick thing too I could have sped this up a lot too just having um, wire nuts on hand I don't have any wire nuts on hand I wasn't gonna run all the way to the my lights on I wasn't gonna run all the way to the store you know just to buy you know whatever um, I did hook the battery back up now I forgot to tell you to do that make sure you unhook the battery before you start chopping wires or then you'll be playing the fuse, looking for fuse game and stuff. Um, so what you always do is hook up your remote wire, which is always mostly blue, unless you got some weird brand of deck or something. Um, your hot, um, the yellow battery, which is your constant for your memory and stuff, and your black, which is usually ground or neutral or whatever. Um, and then test your deck. Make sure you got power, which I don't. You turn the ignition on. <laughs> on this deck, it doesn't come on automatically. The clock or nothing comes on unless you hit it. So it's on and it's working. CD player, da da da. Sounds good. And then a lot of times, what I like to do is just hook up one speaker, you know, just to make sure that it's playing. And but I get confidence that everything's gonna work just fine. So I'm gonna finish up the wiring job here and pop it back in. Another good rule of thumb, um, if you're ever stuck in the situation where you have to tape, um, you don't rely on the tape to hold your wires together. I mean, you rely on your twist job. I mean, you twist the crap out of them. You weave them together, like I said, twist them really tight, um, and that's that. Another thing that will speed this up a lot, like I was saying, I don't know if I mentioned a second ago, but wire nuts. Um, yeah, wire nuts would help a lot. And wire nuts are good to keep moisture out and stuff. I think just as much as tape, though. I mean, you can still get moisture in a wire nut. But obviously, if this was a permanent deal, you would wire on the harness and you'd solder it on to the deck. 
um, you'd solder the wires and heat shrink them and they'd look something like this here that's heat shrink I don't it's not soldered underneath I can feel they twisted them together and it still moves and stuff but yeah that's what you want but like I said if you get stuck in the situation don't rely on the tape the tape is just to freaking keep your wires from touching each other it's an insulator not a connector okay there she is all wired in okay this is an old um, this is was left in here I'm gonna have I haven't retaped that yet but as you can see it's all loose moisture can get in there whatever um, that was on there before I don't know these are f something um, they must be like the illumination wires I'm, I'm guessing for illumination um, but I don't have any hookups on this deck for that so all right um, but yeah that's about as I mean that's about as high as quality as you're gonna get for taping okay and you know I said before you know if you're gonna leave the deck in the car if it's staying in the car if it's a high-end install and you know it's for a customer and that kind of thing then uh, yeah go ahead and solder them um, you just put your soldering gun right underneath right underneath the wire and you know let it heat up a, you know for a few seconds and then tap it with some of that some of the solder and let the solder soak into the, the wires really good and then um, you know obviously make sure you slide your heat shrink on before you do that and then you know heat your sh heat shrink up on each wire um, is it necessary to do that um, if it's your own vehicle and you're just putting a deck in your car hell no um, does it help not really my opinion um, you know if you do it right you shouldn't have any problems have I had this have I had wires come loose in my dash by doing it this way once when I was younger you know when I was when I did a crappy job of taping you know it's it's not rocket science you know I actually I did a crappy job of twisting the wires together and you know I didn't I didn't have a little system down back then and the wires came loose and my tape job wasn't holding on there you know um, it's not even a bad idea to take a little if you got one of those little mini torches or even a lighter and heat these up you can heat this tape up with a lighter right on the seam right where right where you finish heat that up a little bit and then freaking pinch it really hard it ain't gonna come off I mean if you leave this in here for 20 years maybe you know but it ain't gonna come off and is there moisture gonna get in there there better not be any freaking moisture getting in my dash I better not, I shouldn't have water floating around somewhere in my dash to get in there and rust the wires out so no that's not gonna happen just make sure that when you start taping you start off nice and tight and when you get done taping you, you finish nice and tight so let the criticism begin comments are welcome figured I'd shoot this right quick nice little beginners video um, for people that want to do a want to throw a deck in but don't want to do a complete hack job like what was in here All right, thank you also when putting your deck in consider um, what size antenna you have do you have the smaller style or the bigger style most of these pioneer decks comes with a big huge hole in the back so this antenna is not going to plug into it so now I have to actually run up to Walmart and grab an adapter kit because I'm not going to pop this thing in this bezel um, and just say I'm going to put it on later because it's a bitch getting the deck back out of that bezel and, and I have to take out the, the dash again so I'm going to cruise up to Walmart and grab that so that it fits right alright we're almost there um, I grabbed the, you know, one of those scoosh, or scoochie, how you pronounce it, from uh, Walmart. Comes with like two of these. And it's universal, so it's got to plug in for every freaking car, which is retarded. The one that you need, if you want to get it on eBay, tip from like here to there. It's metal, it's big on one side, and it's whatever your factory car is on the other side, whatever you need. So make sure you get the right one because it's retarded stuff and all that crap in the dash. And it's nine dollars anyway. So uh, maybe you guys are wondering um, on a S10 here how to put the dash and stuff back in, so I can do a quick vid on that. Um, you're gonna want the keys in there because you gotta mess around with that. 
So you want to lower your shifter down. See, it's working. Um, got the memory hooked up too, so it actually, if you leave it on, it does come on. My memory wasn't hooked up in the trucks when I had it in there, so that's cool. Freaking cranks too. It's a perfect, perfect match for these uh, sub or for these speakers. So I can praise the Lord in style. All right, so we got that all the way down. Uh, you want to crank your steering wheel all the way down. Okay. I just leave this crap hooked up because I don't want to mess with it. Okay. Just the, just that side anyway. All right. So then you just bring it back in. Watch your deck. Watch your deck when you're putting it back in. I don't know what you had in there before, but when you're going to put it back in, just be really careful. Okay. And when you get her to this point where it's just sitting here nice, you, you have to plug up the airbag. You plug that back up, and then uh, and then just kind of wiggle it into these spots down here, and and you know line up all your tabs. You got a tab there, two tabs underneath the the two tabs underneath there. Um, right there and there you gotta line those up and then you're gonna go ahead and put this screw in here and in here you do have to pull this screw out of your bottom to lower this to be able to get at your screws right there and the one on this side right there you have to pull this screw out here too okay just so you can lower this bottom part um, that's the first step that you do in getting this out on an S10 you pull this screw you pull this screw you pop the bottom down a little bit and you pull that screw out right there which is attached to this and then you pull this one out right here it goes through there okay those are gonna be uh, 8 millimeter I believe and then um, you know don't use power you can use a drill to pull them out but don't put it put them back in with a drill especially if you're a beginner alright there's your deck Mary but now you got tunes so I got the presets for you. The first one is the uh, Air One, you know. If you're feeling like a little bit more upbeat Christian music. And then you get your 92.9, which is your praise and worship. And you get your second praise and worship song. And then, uh, I believe you gotta put 103.3 on here still. Okay, now this is the trick. You get it on a channel, all you do is press and hold the damn button that you want it to save it on, and it blinks right there, and then when it's solid, you can let go. Nice and easy. Now, this channel, 103 Air 1, is on 103.3, but if it doesn't come, if you get closer to the cities and it doesn't come in as good, I think this one comes out of St. Cloud or something, and the other one's closer to the cities. So, as you can hear, that one doesn't come in as good. It automatically cuts out for you when you get too loud so if you're cranking it you know it'll cut out for you automatically you don't have to worry about cranking it oh actually what am I talking about that could be the battery yeah it is all right got her fired up had to jump her off with the jerk so let's go uh, secretly deliver this back to her Oh. Unless she jumps on YouTube and watches this video, I guess, before uh, before she gets back tomorrow, which is highly possible, highly possible. Here's another function that also has a CD player. Yeah. I'll leave this CD in here for you, Mary. Freaking cranks, man. She sounds good. Wakes up these old speakers in a heartbeat. Think about it. It's only got a hundred thousand miles on it, and the deck that was in here didn't even have a face place on on it. So I don't know how long this thing's actually had, you know, tunes, and how much it's been listened to. But these speakers sound pretty fresh. 
So, and they got good bees, you know. Five and a half inches. I'd like to look at those. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure that those are stock either. They sound a little bassier than they should. Got some good truck tunes in here for you, Mary, since you got a truck now. Just to let you know, Mary, you're part of the tailgate club now. Like songs about trucks and whatnot. Sounds way better than my stereo ever sounded in my truck, obviously, because I had like 20 year old speakers in there that were junk. All blown. The stereo sounds better, definitely better than the one in the car, our car even. The car's got like three blown speakers in it. You got tunes. You got tunes now. All right, I'm gonna cruise on over to your house and feed your dogs again. All right, hope you like it. God bless. I'm just uh, taking care of the dogs and, you know, making sure I keep them company, you know. And uh, they got a little hungry since they still haven't eaten their food yet. Um, but it's okay. I think Tasha can stand to miss a few meals. Um, Hannah, on the other hand, worries me, so... I just uh, gave her a piece of ham, um, and then I gave Tasha a piece of ham. They really liked those pieces of ham. So, you know, whatever I can do to keep them alive until you guys get back, you know. And then um, uh, I got hungry, and I don't have a whole lot at home. And I, um, I've been working so hard on the stereo install that, you know, I just didn't have time to put anything together for dinner. And here it is, 11 o'clock at night or something. Where are we at? It's 11.30. And, you know, I, I didn't eat. This is good. That stuff's good. Rachel just bought some of it. What's that, truck 50 sugar, 50 less calories? Um... I'll clean everything up. Don't worry about it. Uh, actually, Mary, I was thinking I have the perfect trade-off for you. Unless I already owe you for something, which I don't think I do. Um, you know, that stereo install, you know, would have normally cost you, you know, upwards of $800 at a, at a shop, you know. Um, <laughs> Seriously, though, what I was thinking, how about... You detail the Dodge when I'm ready to sell it. Um, I got most of the interior just like I, I took maybe 10 minutes and did the interior. That's how much time I really spent on the interior. I was just going to say, you know what? Be blessed. And uh, down the road, there'll be something that maybe you could do for me. We'll see. And then I thought of that thing. So there it is. I'm going to finish up uh, taking care of the dogs here. And uh, you have a good night. Be blessed. <laughs> All right. some of the ham into their dog food. I had to chop it up really small so that they have to physically eat some of the dog food by accident. <laughs>